Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So it's time to do my module 27 tier list. This is going to be based upon the latest endgame content. The defense of the Moondancer trial. This will come from the perspective of the master version where it's on its maximum difficulty where classes are pushed to their limits. However this trial is significantly easier than previous master trials and you'll pretty much get through it on any class. It'll just be a little bit easier on some classes and harder on others. And that's what we're gonna put the basis of this tier list on. How easy is it for you to fulfill your role in this content? Not just how easy, but also how impactful that role is. If you're a damage dealer, how easy it is to deal a lot of damage. You could have a DPS class who's really easy, but be very terrible at damage. Thus, you would have to put more effort in to actually get a higher output in damage, thus leading to the class being more difficult. So it all ties in. So this is our tier list. We have all the classes. We're breaking them up into separate roles. For example, a barbarian can play as a DPS, a damage dealer, and it can also play as a tank. We're going to, in this, rank everything together, but don't compare a damage dealer versus a healer or a tank. Just compare them versus each other. Again, based on from very easy to very hard. How well those classes can perform with the effort required to play them. There'll be timestamps on the play bar below where you can skip to any section you're most interested in. I'll have a section at the end of when we covered all the damage dealers, a tier list there with all of them, and then we'll do the same for the healers going through them each one by one, and then also the tanks. I shall cover a little bit about each of the classes and that role specifically giving a somewhat of a reasonable power setup you could use to perform adequately along with a few tips and pointers as to how well that class is going to perform and how you generally want to play it. This is one of the main things that these tier lists do is give a little bit of an insights to newer players who are interested in the game what the class will be like. So we're gonna start things off with the Barbarian. You can play it as a tank or a DPS. For now, we're gonna focus on the damage dealer. Here you will be choosing the Blade Master Powergon path. This is somewhat of a setup you'll use in single target when just beating up a boss. You will use your powers, you will generate a rage, which is this bar here. You'll enter rage and then you'll be able to use your at wills like twice as fast, dealing a lot of damage over time. Once that rage ends, you'll go and use your encounters again. And overall, your single target damage is not too bad. You have a decent burst. You have decent damage over time. It's just you do struggle in yeah, taking a beating when you're close to enemies. A lot of fights are not very favorable with being up close. So you're going to have to avoid mechanics a lot more than other classes. And as for your multi-target powers, you'll use a setup something like this. And what you really suffer with here is the problem that your damage is a lot of damage over time. You're not exactly dealing a lot of damage in burst. And so if you're competing against other players, the enemies will be probably be dead before you can output a lot of damage. So for the new trial, I'm gonna have to place the Barbarian DPS in hard. It is hard to do your role properly and output a lot of damage with there just being a lot of things here that punish melee damage dealers. And on top of that, you don't have a lot of impactful area of effect powers. So now we go to the Bard. Again, you can be a damage dealer, but you can also be a healer. We'll cover that a little bit later. And here you will choose the Song Blade as your DPS path. For the new trial, you'll use a setup something like this. You'll use like duet for a bit of area of effect instead of say dancing light as single target. The one challenging thing with Bard is you'll want to learn to manually play these songs. They will give you certain buffs and just increase your effectiveness. On top of that, you will be casting encounter powers a lot versus other classes. Just those encounter powers, yeah, they're, they're not that impactful just by themselves. That's why you'll end up casting a lot of them. And on top of that, you're gonna rely pretty heavily on a particular feature 
This one right here to output your damage in a trial, where when anybody attacks your target, which you trigger this on, it deals a lot of damage against that target, depending on how many allies hit that target within like a split second window. So the more people you have targeting your target, the more damage you can deal. And then you're relying also on the chance for this to trigger on the target. So it's a bit of a mess and Bard is not exactly in the best spot. You can do well, it's just a lot more challenging. You're again also mainly going to be playing up close to your enemies for full effect. So you will have to be playing as a melee damage dealer, taking extra damage, being aware of certain mechanics, moving away and then you can't attack and coming back in for dealing more damage. So again, with this new trial, you're going to struggle to output a lot of damage. So I'm going to have to put the bar DPS also in hard. From there, we move to the cleric. You can play as a DPS, but you can also play as a healer. We'll cover that a little bit later. Here, you will be choosing the Arbiter Paragon path. Now, the Cleric in general is probably the most challenging damage dealer class out there because it has a very strict rotation, at least in single target, that you must follow in order to perform well. You also really, really need a coordinated group that is going to be doing artifact calls where you have a burst window, 10 seconds, where you can deal more than double damage against the boss. And that is when you dump all of your powers and they all deal again like double damage. Without that, you will perform very, very poorly. On top of that, in this new trial, you cannot afford to run really any AoE powers. You're going to have to still go in with pretty much single target damage in order to perform well. So you're going to miss out on a lot of damage against all those adds. You can use a particular set to gain extra damage against adds when you use the daily power for the burst window, but sometimes it might not align right. Again, you'll use a setup something like this and your rotation is really strict where you need to take it advantage of perfect balance in order to do well. Your rotation is going to go like this. Before the burst window, you're going to want to make sure you have two stacks of your perfect balance. So that's two Forge Masters and two Dauntings and you get those two stacks. Then you need to make sure you have full divinity. You're going to want to do all this and have it set up before the burst window, before that artifact call. So you have to know the content you have to know when the caller is going to call for the artifact call or you have to be that caller so once you have this setup you can go right away with your artifact call you're going to go like your prophecy of doom your ar artifact your daily power then you're going to go like one forge masters a daunting a forge masters a daunting your mount power you're going to get your perfect balance forge masters a daunting forge masters a daunting and then you're out of divinity and that should be the burst window done and that's, that's pretty much it. You need to squeeze in that full rotation and you need to do it quicker than I did there to get everything done in your Prophecy of Doom. And then that deals a da massive amount of damage. And yeah, it takes a lot of timing and practice to do really well on the Cleric. It is not that it can't do it, it can. It can perform nearly as well as like the top damage data class in the new trial just needs a lot of work. So in this trial, you're going to struggle. It is for sure the hardest class to play here. So I'm going to have to put it in very hard. You do have the leniency that you can play at a distance. So that is nice. You are ranged. You do have a shift ability to get out of red zones. But again, that rotation so strict compared to other classes you're super punished if you die or if you mess up and so unless you really know what you're doing you're not going to perform that well next up we have the fighter you can play as a dps but you can also play as a tank more about that later here you'll be taking the dreadnought paragon path as dps You'll be using somewhat of a setup like this for single target damage and you have a lot of very hard hitting powers. You can do pretty well in single target if your boss isn't going anywhere. If your target stays there and you don't have too many mechanics that you need to play that require you to move around a lot. Other than that, you're going to struggle if your target is moving around a lot. That is where the fighter suffers. If you have fights where you need to move away from the boss, you immediately lose out on all your damage because you can't attack. And yeah, 
you don't have the ability to immunity frame damage. You can block like this on your shield, absorb the hits, but when you lose the stamina, you're also losing offensive stats, you're losing damage. And so in this trial, you about suffer the most compared to any other damage dealers. Everything just seems to be against you. You don't have the immunity frames to avoid getting hit. You're just going to get wrecked by ads if you get their attention. You're going to get red zones that you can't get out of quick enough by moving. That you're just going to drain all your stamina, meaning you're losing damage. And even then, you're not going to have enough stamina to block everything and you just get wrecked. So I'm definitely going to have to put fighter DPS also in very hard. It is punished so much in this trial. It's like, why bother? You may as well just play as tank. The unique mechanic with fighter is you'll want to make sure you have your vengeance bar above 50 in order to gain that full damage effect here on your abilities. And you'll need to balance your stamina and your vengeance in order to output the maximum amount of damage. In area of effect, when you have groups of enemies, you will struggle a bit as you don't have the best powers, but you'll use like Onslaught, Tremor, and Shield Slam combined with this feat right here. When you use Heavy Slash, you increase their magnitudes. So from there, we move to the Ranger. Your pure DPS. You have two different Paragons, both damage dealers. However, in its current state, you will definitely want to be going Hunter. Warden just is not very impactful. You'll be getting a setup something like this for single target, potentially switching over to Cordon and particularly plant growth there instead of long striders for multi-target damage. Your unique mechanic is stance switching to gain a full set of encounter powers. So you stance switch and you have three more encounter powers and you'll be combining that to output the most amount of damage. Then you have an at will attack you can use from a distance to do heavy amounts of damage. But in most of the time you will need to play up close in order to maximize that damage to be able to use those melee powers. So you'll be using, yeah, pretty much everything from right next to your enemy. But you do have the option to play at a little bit more of a distance, getting away, getting some distance. And then by the time you can use those melee powers again, you can move in and use them. You do have a bit of a playstyle shift that you can switch things up and use the daily power disruptive shot combined with your feet just here along with a mount insignia bonus with like tactician's precision. Check out people's builds with that. It's quite interesting and a new playstyle. Ultimately, you can do pretty well in this trial as a ranger. You will suffer a little bit with regards needing to play melee to maximize your damage, but it's not uh, like a must you can still output decent damage when the times are that you have to stay at a bit of a distance so you aren't punished that much you do have the ability to like immunity frame damage with this dodge which you can use an awful lot here being able to use very little stamina to use it which is nice so in my opinion ranger is in a solid okay decent spot here for the trial does suffer a little bit with melee, otherwise it would be higher because it does have the potential. But in terms of the ease of play versus its effectiveness, I'm putting it in okay. From there, we go to the Rogue. Again, you're just a true damage dealer, no other choice. However, as it stands right now, Assassin is your only real viable power gun path. Whisper Knife just does not perform very well when you have a long fight and you need that damage over time. You will be using a setup pretty much like this. It's very nice right now. You can use Path of Blades to get a bit of area damage along with using it in your single target rotation. Unfortunately, we have word that this may very well be changing. Keep an eye out for when it does, but that probably won't happen for another month or two. You do have a particular rotation you want to follow in order to maximize your damage. There are a few variants, but most people will use in an artifact call your artifact, making sure you get your bleed stacks up, then using your wicked reminder from stealth, your daily power, your path of blades from stealth, your mount power, and then your assassinate. And that's pretty much the rotation you want to follow, combining it with your powers here with that invisible infiltrator to get the stealth right after you've used your daily. And that's what you do for single target damage. Make sure to take 
advantage of like gloaming cut on its stealth effect when you kill somebody particularly in this new trial with lots of ads but again rogue does suffer a bit from being melee they have to be up close and you may also notice that when you have path of blades up you may very well very easily get the attention of nearby enemies which will just jump on you and kill you it is very easy to die like that however you do have like your immunity frames you can get out of places out of damage you just need to be very careful but you really need to maximize that that time on target to output as much damage as possible however your effectiveness is pretty good you're not that hard to play in my opinion and so i will put rogue there also on okay from here we go to warlock dps again they also have a healer path but more about that later so you will be choosing hellbringer You'll want to use a setup something like this in order to maximize your damage. One thing you really have going for you in this new trial is that you have a lot of powers which are just multi-target already. They are the best options to use in single target. So you will shine very well in this fight. You will want to learn somewhat of animation cancelling to really master the amount of damage you can output. Getting your soul sparks, getting your cooldowns done and just yeah outputting a lot of damage which a lot of it again is already multi-target damage on top of that your daily power is doing a ton of damage to enemies nearby not just to the single target already so warlock can really have a field day in this in this trial as well as you may have seen some other class <laughs> wizard in terms of how easy they are to play i think they're fairly easy especially in this trial at least to output pretty good damage one thing you will struggle on a little bit more versus other classes is this dodge ability it doesn't give you immunity frames as reliably as other classes can make it a bit harder to move out of red zones but you should be able to get used to it and uh, yeah learn to move when you need to just without that drawback, I might even be tempted to put Warlock up in very easy on top of the kind of necessary need for animation counseling to really maximize that damage versus another class, which I will put there, which is going to be the wizard. So let's actually go to the wizard. This class is just been doing super well. Again, you are just a true DPS. You could either be a Thaumaturge or you can be Arcanist. For the new trial, I highly recommend being Thaumaturge. You want to make use of glowing flames plus your arcane singularity to just do massive amounts of damage with then getting that daily power back much quicker with combustive action. Arcanist is just not going to compete on that level at all versus Thaumaturge. Again, particularly in this new trial, which is the latest Module 27 content. You will be wanting to use a setup something like this, using your single target powers on one enemy here, and then using your like arcane singularity on groups of enemies to just absolutely melt them. So again, Wizard just does very well in this trial, and it's pretty easy to play as well. I'm definitely going to have to put this one in very easy. So that is all the damage dealers ranked there. And that's what I would safely say is pretty fair for the latest content, the new trial. Again, how easy it is to play that class versus how much damage they can output, how well they can perform their role. Wizard is just going to have the easiest time here dealing a ton of damage without a whole lot of effort. Again, versus a cleric and a fighter who are going to struggle a lot more to output that damage. If you can do well in this trial with those classes, hats off to you. You're putting in a lot more effort than these other classes, that's for sure, if you're competing with them on damage. So from here, we're going to go to the healers. And we start with the Bard. Again, it has a DPS path, which we have covered. You will be wanting to take the Minstrel path and use a setup something like this. In order to heal people, you will be using songs to do so. So you will need to learn to play them, practicing what notes to press. You will need to enter your performance mode. And once here, you will need to type what you want to play in order to actually cast that song. And then you will give those effects to your teammates. You do have the opportunity to make use of, let's say, quick play slots, where you can use just those songs with one button press, 
but they generally will have you losing out on certain extra abilities. In terms of your output of healing, it's pretty good. When allies drop to like 50% of their health, they will automatically get healed by you, which is a nice security thing. And on top of that, you just have a lot of increases to your team's effectiveness that you can provide, like movement speed combined with damage, and some other damage buffs here, along with increasing your teammate healing and damage resistance if they're a tank. And overall, you're supporting the team a lot, not just with healing, but your heals do compete with other healers and they are very good. It's just, again, you will need to put in a lot of practice to learn to play these. You'll want to end up doing them manually at some point, learning exactly what to press to cast these without relying on, let's say, quick play slots. But ultimately, in the new trial, I'm going to have to put the Bard Healer in OK. It's not the easiest to play, and it doesn't provide the security that some other healers might provide, like the Paladin or the Warlock with giving people shields where you basically give them increased hit points bard doesn't have so much of that you have one power which is your daily which will allow you to do so but you can't maintain that effect all the time you're good you can support the team an awful lot but you're harder to play and you don't provide as much security to the team so from there we go to the cleric healer again you have a dps path which we've covered earlier and here you will be taking the devout path using a setup something like this. Now you are pretty much just a raw healer. You're there to just keep everybody's hit points at full. You have a decent heal over time, which is the best of all healers. But from there, you don't have an awful lot. You have a power which you can use to reactively heal people for a ton. You have some okay heal resource regeneration and you can provide some mitigation reducing the damage your allies take with also this power here it's just yeah you don't have a lot more than just healing that's an unfortunate thing with cleric you just keep everybody alive with regards to keeping their hit points full from there you have a little bit of damage resistance effects but other than that nothing really to support your team in the way of de them dealing extra damage or providing extra security with like shields. So in this trial, I'm gonna have to put the Cleric Healer also in just okay. They're a lot easier to play than the Bard, but you don't have the support it can provide. And again, you will have to play a little bit more reactively. You have some good heal over times, but you will have to actively heal people to make sure they're on full rather than relying on something automatic that was gonna heal them when they drop to a certain amount of hit points, like let's say a Bard could. But from there, we go to the Paladin Healer. Again, it has a tank path, which we will cover a little bit later. Now here you will take the Oathkeeper path. And well, with module 27, you got a pretty decent amount of improvements. You can do really well. And the play style is pretty easy. You're just going to use your Divine Shelter to give everybody a decent shield. You're going to mark your tank. For example, we mark ourselves to give them these wings. And then you'll use your hand of divinity power to give them an absolutely massive shield. You're going to nearly double their hit points. And again, you're giving everybody this smaller shield, but that's pretty much all you're going to do. You can use your other two incana powers to just give you back some regeneration of your divinity, your heal resource. And that's it. You're pretty easy to play. You give everybody this security of nice extra shields. You'll end up only really having to do two things, giving the tank the big shield, giving everybody else the smaller shield, and the rest is just using powers when they're off cooldown to gain the divinity regeneration. In this trial, you do very well. Your team will really appreciate to have you as a healer in the group, especially the tanks who need to take those massive hits. Ultimately, I would say the combination of the Paladin being very easy to play, healing a lot, giving those security shields, means I have to put it in very easy. From there, we go to the Warlock Healer. Again, it has a DPS path, which we have covered earlier. Now here you will take the Soul Weaver path, and there's two different ways you can play either Fae Pact or Hell Pact. One will be healing over time, 
and the other one will be shields. So it really depends what group you're in. If you're in a group with a bard or a cleric, go with Hell Pact and give everybody extra shields. And with module 27 update, they are pretty decently sized shields as well. You can also use an at will to give decent sized shield. It will be a lot bigger when on other players who have incoming healing and you get all your stats nice and high. But that's one way you can play it. You use like a vampiric embrace to give everybody a shield. And then use like revitalize to give them a shield or an extra heal. And like warlock's bargain to give you some regeneration on your soul weave. And you have a lot of soul weave regeneration which is your healer resource. Especially compared to other healers. So you should not be running out that easily. But again you have the option to play as a heal over time player. So in dungeons and such where people need lots of healing highly recommend going fey pact ultimately in this trial because you can have the option to play security with the shields you can do very well tanks will appreciate the at will for the extra shield and other players will appreciate the shield you can give with vampiric embrace but again if you're in a group with let's say a paladin healer who's going to get better shields than you slightly better then make sure to go the heal over time and just keep everybody's hit points topped off paladin won't do that as well as you if you're on the heal over time path ultimately that is how i would rank the healers in this new trial the paladin being very easy the warlock being just easy and bard and cleric being okay with that we're gonna move to the tanks and we start with the barbarian tank again it has a dps path which we've covered earlier and here you will be going with the sentinel you'll be using a power setup something like this at least for the beginning of the fight to have some extra threat with particular primal fury and takedown and you may very well want to switch to some more survivability powers later on like enduring shout and ignore weakness just depends what you're comfortable with i have run the new trial on my barbarian tank and personally it was very smooth i did not have any trouble going from playing paladin to barbarian and i played on a very scuffed build and i will say with the new changes of module 27 with barbarian tank it now does very well your unique abilities is that you're gonna stack lots and lots of hit points so you're gonna have an absolute ton of that but additionally you have the like rage mechanic as well where when you're in a fight and you use your powers you will generate that rage and over time once you get to like 50 of that you can enter unstoppable real good thing with this is if you're stunned or crowd controlled like dazed and such and you enter this unstoppable that will end your control immune and you will block automatically all the incoming damage so in this new trial where you have to take tank busters i recommend watching my gameplay on the side of a tank i have posted of paladin and of sentinel and you will take this massive hit and right before the hit you will get stunned and if you don't block the hit you do get stunned so on a barbarian you can just let yourself get stunned and well just use that unstoppable to break out of the stun and then use all your buff powers to then take the big tank buster hit so it's very relaxing to play especially since the boss does tends to not animate much so you can't know when you're going to get stunned so there's a lot of pressure on the other tanks playing it and otherwise you do have decent area of effect threat with like primal fury if your build is very budget you can use a daily power like primal instincts to get your stats really high if not maxed out and then you can take those hits no problem so for me i'm definitely gonna have to place barbarian tank in easy for this new trial not in very easy as your role here is still pretty challenging you screw up a few times and you could just wipe the entire raid you have to know what you're doing you aren't just mindlessly killing stuff you have to learn mechanics so from here we go to the fighter again you can play as a dps but we've discussed that earlier here you will want to choose the vanguard path as a tank if you want to be tank you have to choose the vanguard path you'll use a setup something like this Again, having the opportunity to switch to some more survivability powers if you need, depending on the group and what content you're running. And in the new trial, you'll probably want to have Iron Warrior for the damage resistance. One thing that Fighter is good at, but also bad at, is it will provide these stats when you use your dig in, like awareness and when you're blocking critical avoidance. 
It's just when you have those stats already nice and high, you won't need that. And from there, the fighter just lacks any daily power, which would give you extra damage resistance versus the Paladin or the Barbarian increasing their hit points by like 35%, where you can only use a daily power to get like 20%. The rest won't help you with survivability. Phalanx would if you gained the dig in effect while using it, but you don't. Ultimately, in the top min max end game, Fighter is pretty much the squishiest. You take the most damage. It's the hardest to survive. And on top of that, I find Fighter pretty clunky. It's not that fluid and smooth as playing a Barbarian or, or a Paladin, but you do have, versus all the other tanks, the most team support. You can use a power enforced threat, and you basically are increasing your entire team's damage by 10% against the target. That's the most that any tank could provide. You're the best at supporting your team in dealing damage. But you also lack area of effect threat. You're not great at like grabbing the attention of groups of enemies versus say a paladin or a barbarian. So ultimately, fighter tank for me is gonna have to go in okay. It can do the job, it can get it done all right. Personally, not as easy as the other tanks, but again, just okay. From there, we finally go to Paladin. Again, you can play as healer, which we've mentioned before, but as tank, you'll be choosing the Justicar path. You'll have a setup something like this. I play Paladin a lot, particularly tank. You can check gameplays and guides and builds on my channel about them. But ultimately, you did get some buffs with this new module. You got some improvements, particularly to your threat. And we can now use an ability called Intimidating Presence, where you activate it. And it's basically a large area. Enemies take damage over time within it, and you generate high threat against them. It's really useful against like groups of enemies that you need to grab their attention off. So you're really good in this new trial at that. On top of that, you can use a daily power right here to give you massive amounts of damage resistance and a boost to your awareness stat to make sure you have that capped and be able to survive those tank busters really well. It is, in my opinion, about the most survivable tank in min-max endgame when you have already have like your defensive stats nice and high but not so good early game versus like a fighter it does have a learning curve with regards to your divinity and using that with your divine champion and palisade but once you get the hang of it it is pretty straightforward and in this new trial holding threat is really easy and surviving is also pretty easy it lacks the ability to break out of crowd control that stun effect so you will have to be careful with those tank busters but I will place it above the fighter in terms of just how easy it is to play with regards to the recent buffs, particularly holding threat of groups of enemies and then just taking those tank busters with no problem when you have your daily power, which you should be able every time. So that is ultimately my full tier list for module 27. Again, it is based off this new trial. How easy it is for you to do your role whether that's tanking, healing, or damage dealing. Hopefully this was at least somewhat insightful to you guys, just a bit of an overview of each of the classes, how well they're performing with this latest update and the end game content to go with it. Again, be aware that every class can do very well in all the content outside of that. If you're just running your random cues here, you can do very well on any class. There's no excuse to perform really badly. If you're just doing your adventures and campaigns, again, you should have no problem with them. No class is going to struggle with them. So with that said, a special thank you again to all of these channel members for their added support. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.